would love to have an endless supply of water, which is honestly a pretty big coincidence, because next up, for our last and final speaker, we have Ganesh Shankar, someone who was born and raised in Bangalore, the city of lakes, the city of gardens. Now, a leading entrepreneur in sustainability and water conservation, he works tirelessly against the largest source of water in our city, industrial plants. He sees the potential in our currently unsustainable systems and unflinchingly dedicates his life to repairing them, giving back to the city that raised him. Can we please have a huge round of applause for Ganesh Shankar? Have you ever thought the water that you're drinking, where does it come from? Is it from Kempambudi Lake, Dharmambudi, or Akitamana Hali Lake? Any guess? Actually, none of them. These are landmark places today. Like, we have majestic bus stand at Dharmambudi Lake, where it was, and you have Kantira Stadium, where at Sampangi Lake, and Akitamana Lake is a hockey club, right? Like this, more than 1,000 lakes in Bangalore actually have uh, vanished, including K Kormangla, Dumlur, all these were lakes, right? And it happened because of various urban encroach encroachment. Fortunately, I grew up near a lake that still exists. That's called Madiwala Lake. I have the fondest memories of this lake, right? I mean, my father used to take me on a Sunday morning for a walk. With and he used to tell me all nice stories. And I used to watch the beautiful ducks. And I used to enjoy, it was an enchanting moment to me. I always used to wait for Sunday, like tomorrow, right? But one day, I was told, even this lake will be encroached into making a locality like Kormangla or Domblur. I was disenchanted. I thought terrible about its absence. Fortunately, the residents around the lake decided to fight against the authority. They, they wanted to make sure that we protect the lake. They did a rally, massive rally. They even involved Karnataka Forest Department to ensure that they get a support for protecting this lake. And they also involved so many people, including a 10-year-old me, into a painting competition. We had kids also participating in a painting competition and they asked, to make their imagination of the lake. Fortunately, the rally against the authority, they won and we were able to protect the lake. <laughs> I also won the painting competition. I was conferred the title friend of lake. <laughs> so, during this time, I built a relationship with water. I, you know, earliest events in your life have such a profound impact on your life, right? And. Uh, I still remember the earliest uh, uh, days in my uh, childhood, we had a well at home. I used to drink that water from that well. Probably the water that if I had, I had that well, I would have drunk from this. Right? And by the time I went to my school, the well dried out and uh, we got a tap connection at home. And uh, for, unfortunately, the water was not regular because of which my father had to construct a over a tank. My father was taking affairs of water at home. He had to construct a tank. By the time I went to my middle school, he had to even construct a sump at home because water was not able to uh, pump the over a tank uh, from the main tank, right? So then he also had to construct one more tank by the time I went to my engineering days, right? Today, as I talk, we also get water from tankers. Slowly I have actually lost that relationship with water. I don't even know what water I drink today. I don't know where is it coming from. I've been told, I mean, that today the water, most of the water that we get in Bangalore comes from River Kaveri and its tributary Kabini, which is located in Mandya and Mysore district. All the way, 150 kilometers as an average. And it actually pumps almost 1,500 million liters above 1,500 feet. The biggest water pumping in the whole of Asia. 
right? And not just that, I mean, uh, the amount of energy consumed, the purification, I still don't know what happens in between, right? This is also coming at the cost, people who are actually near these rivers not getting the water, right? I've been told that some many people who are just next to it, they get water once in 15 days, while we get water on almost on an alternative day basis, right? This is coming at the cost of stripping somebody else's right to water, right? <laughs> so what is the solution to this? The solution to the water crisis is becoming water positive. What do you mean by becoming water positive? Basically becoming water positive is having enough water that you don't have to take from somebody else, right? You just have it, replenish it. Kaveri river that we get water from today, actually more than 33% of it gets wasted in leakage, wastage, excessive usage, right? And while the pipeline. And <coughs> I, I, I've been told that the per capita consumption is supposed to be around 100 liter per day, but we actually consume because of various shower or jacuzzi, whatever you use, we consume up to 200, 250 liters per day individually. And I've been also, I also know that the water that we consume in our apartment is not even treated and the tre untreated water gets into our aquifers and we end up getting polluted water. So I, I have found three uh, ways that we can actually build a water positive world in my limited experience. No water should be wasted. No water should be, uh, le there should be leakage, right? Conservation of water uh, cannot be an altruistic approach. It has to be accountable. It has to be financially viable. So we believe, I believe that we have to make sure that all the water has to be monitored, just like how water as a liquid is transparent and clear. You should make the data of water transparent and clear and build solution on top of it and ensure nobody wastes the water or they are... Uh, there should be penalty for it. So you need to use technology to monitor this water. If Bangalore can use technology startups to solve uh, problems in entertainment, gaming, retail, why are we not using technology to solve the wat problem of water? We believe there is enough technology to monitor water, identify leakage, wastage, excessive usage, both at the apartment level as well as from the overall water that is coming from River Kaveri all the way. The next problem, that next solution that I have is uh, we have to use minimal water through uh, aerators or even foot tap to ensure that there we can use as less as possible. That's how you can come to 100 liters per day consumption or even less. The next thing I would believe is there's enough rainfall that we have in the city of Bangalore, but where does it go? Flood or goes in storm water? You can actually have all this water harvested. We get nearly 970 million millimeters of rainfall per year. If we, even if we just take half of that water, harvest it in the city, we will be able to get 200 days of water for us. Right? And that is a, it, it can be done through straightforward fixtures, uh, rainwater harvesting fixtures, and a civil engineer will be able to do it. Okay. That is the next approach that we have to take. The, while you have to conserve water, next you have to harvest the water to ensure that you can use the water that is here, not have to go all the way 200 kilometers or 150 kilometers to get that water. We have it here. And it's just not at our homes. We have to have rainwater percolating pits at every corner of our street. It also avoids flood, by the way. So water would sweep in and ensure that it will be there in our... Uh, aquifers and you can withdraw it, right? So, <laughs> the next thing that I would say is that the water that we consume at our home, if it is not treated, you know, it goes through uh, sewage and uh, even the phenol and all the chemicals that go through, will actually end up becoming part of your groundwater. So, what goes in comes out. So, it is going to affect us. So, it is very important the whether in apartment association or in a industrial association or in any commercial complex, the water treatment has to be prioritized. 
when you do that that water that comes out of it would actually not have any contamination in it right so that way these three approach that i uh, said is going to ensure at least we will have water that goes into the lake which is not co contaminated right and i hope some day when i go with my son to this lake i only not see this lake being available but some day i can also drink i hope the whole aspect of uh, making the city water positive is a collective conviction that we should have by this when we have the conviction to do harvesting conservation and treatment reuse of water we'll never have to get water from somebody else's source thank you so much